Not a single one of these aquascaping approaches survived being dropped from just one foot, but what really matters is why we gave each of them a full week to cure and how doing the same for your aquascape will save you from a massive headache down the road. So I highly doubt that you'll find yourself in a situation where your aquascape plummets to its destruction, but I can tell you firsthand, trying to perfectly re-aquascape a bunch of loose rocks back to their former glory after you've ripped apart the tank to catch some pesky, sick, or injured fish just plain sucks. In which case, we set out to find which aquascaping bond choices, super glue, epoxy, mortar, or combinations of the three, held up the strongest in a series of stress tests. In our first investigates, we gave each bonding option only 24 hours to cure and found that epoxy on dry rock was a clear winner in such a short time, while nearly all other options failed due to lack of time to cure completely through. However, because that test was a bit unfair and most reefers will likely give their aquascapes more than 24 hours to set, Today, we're picking this test back up with every bonding option getting a full seven days to cure completely. So will that epoxy reign supreme or will the popular watery glue and sand option be a dark horse that we missed in the first test? Let's find out. First, let's look at each of the nine aquascaping bonds that we're testing today. There's Marco Mortar only, Marco Mortar Hybrid with Super Glue and Instaset, Aquaphor Stone Fix, gobs of super glue gel only, gobs of super glue with Instaset, a three layer super glue cake where you lay down a thin layer of super glue, spritz it with Instaset, and then repeat two more times, epoxy only, epoxy hybrid with super glue and Instaset. And because many of you asked for it, thin watery super glue mixed with small grains of sand and applied in multiple layers. Using each bonding option, I built a small arching aquascape with the intent that the center of the arch was solely secured with the bonding agent of choice. Then we set each one aside for a week to cure. After a seven day wait, I conducted the same series of stress tests that we did in the last episode, where test one was to pick up the structure by two points of contact. Test two was to lift the entire aquascape by the center arch boulder. And test three was a drop from about a foot off the table. And test four, should any of them survive that far, was a drop from five feet off the ground. Well, I wish I could say that more than one made it to the five foot drop this time around, but the truth is, although all nine aquascapes breezed through test one and two, all of them succumbed to the one foot drop and broke apart in varying degrees of destruction. You gotta check out this slow motion. So with no clear strength winner, what are we supposed to glean from today's test? Well, even though each one held up equally throughout our stress tests, these were pretty basic aquascapes with little complexity in overhangs and a lack of serious load-bearing joints. That said, after first-hand experience with each option, I'll quickly share some thoughts on each one, including the bonding combo that Ryan and I will forever use going forward. So the super glue options first, gobs of super glue on joints looks terrible even after a long time in the tank as you can see in my office tank where I still see shiny bits of glue everywhere. Super glue and Instaset's nice because you get a strong enough bond to move your aquascape around shortly after you glue it, but the same problem is the last. The three layer glue cake was a good idea conceptually but no real benefit over other glue methods and again, it still looks like glue in the tank. 
As for the mortars, mortar only is pretty easy to work with so long as you get the right consistency so it doesn't run. However, applying mortar underneath joints or ledges proved to be pretty difficult. Mortar, glue, and Insaset hybrid benefits from the fast curing of the glue, but securing the joints underneath the ledges, still an issue. As for the Aquaphor stone fix, the consistency was pretty easy to achieve, but man, do you need to work fast and in small batches so it doesn't cure in your container before you even get to use it. Next up is the popular watery super glue sand combo, which surprisingly cured very quickly. But if you're gonna use this approach, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area because those fumes can get really overbearing. Outside of that, I thought it was super messy, so much so that the watery glue ran onto my cardboard work surface, meaning I had to rip the aquascape off and there was some residual cardboard left underneath. I also found it difficult to get the sand in just the right spot and then quickly douse it in with glue. However, I will say that the final product was the best looking of all the options since the sand blends the joints together better than the rest. Now onto the epoxies. Other than the color choices which really stand out on bone dry Marco rock, this is for sure one of my top choices. Not only can I mash the epoxy into all sorts of nooks and crevices, but it's one of the only options that allowed me to secure underneath joints without dripping or falling off in gobs. But the real winner in my book is a combination of both super glue and Instaset to get the joints secured where I want them, then epoxy on as many load bearing structural joints as possible, preferably underneath, and then finally coming back over each joint to hide the seam with some rock dust and that watery general bonding super glue. Actually, Ryan's latest three piece HNSA demonstrates just how awesome our new favorite approach can turn out. And luckily for us, he documented the entire step by step process for how he did it in this video right over here that's full of tricks and tips for you to create your own stunning aquascape with the needs of your fishy pet's habitat at the core.